Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. Welcome to episode 601. I am here solo doing the intro to this podcast because we are going to be taking a look at part two of our conversation with uh, Brad this week. So, but before we get to that part two, we have um, something that we need to deal with. What is that? Oh, it's time for the correspondence of the week. So last week we talked about coffee and what kind of magical properties coffee has. And um, we let Brad pick that. And um, continuing in that vein a little bit, I wanted to talk about whiskey and the magical properties and possible ways that you can use whiskey. Uh, my friend Brad it has some very deep and much loved uh, roots in his Irish family. And so uh, Brad has been known to uh, want to share Jameson with his friends. And um, it usually, if I fall for it, it usually puts me on my hiney. So whenever I think of Jameson and whiskey, I always think of Brad. So when looking at magical properties and ways to use whiskey, um, it's connected with the element of water, which makes complete sense since it's a liquid. Um, and because there is, I like this part of um, a correspondence for whiskey, um, it's about change. And, you know, it's that change of whatever substance, usually it's a grain or a, um, a vegetable um, that is necessary to, to make whiskeys and other kinds of alcoholic beverages. So it's about that change and that transformation. So that's really um, a cool um, a cool thing that you can use it for in your magic. You can also use it for protection magic and for strength, uh, because any well-made whiskey is going to have some power to it. So strength and energy, um, that's all connected with whiskey. Um, it's good for prosperity work and for growth. And again, along with change, there's transformation in there. It's also good for fertility. It, there is those connection to plants. So that makes uh, a lot of sense. Um, it's good for marriage work and it's good for financial luck, um, which I think that's kind of interesting too. I know from speaking with different hoodoo practitioners that whiskey, vodkas, um, other alcohols like that are things that they will use to, uh, to strengthen a spell, to seal a spell and things of that nature. So, um, those are some ways that you can use whiskey in your magic. So that was our correspondence of the week. And so let's now get into this second part of the podcast with Brad. Enjoy. So how do your kids affect if they if they do your beliefs? Um affect or interact. Either. Either oh, or cuz you it, have you have four daughters. Four daughters. One granddaughter. One granddaughter, one grandson. And one, I'm one grandson, sorry. Yes, I knew that and I <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> um so or is in, interacting uh, they really haven't expressed any interest or I, I don't know if interest is the right word. They haven't, we haven't talked about it. We haven't, I, I'm open to it. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested. And, but, well, and, and they know where to find us too. Yeah, right. But, but they are collectively, uh, they're uh, going to be 18 to 25. Right. They, they are collectively in the range I was when I fell out of Christianity into paganism, mm -hmm. which is a big shift in spiritual belief. So they, they are collectively in that age range, age range I was when I didn't know what I was going to believe in. Mm-hmm. 
So, so have you so had was, have you had any conversations with them about paganism? No, not particularly. We've had you know passing conversation or comment or. Uh, my youngest just got a kitten, and several of the names I was suggesting for it were 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 uh, pagan in origin, mm -hmm. or at least came from it. Mm -hmm. Did she so. use any of those names? No, of course. She totally picked something else. Yep. What? She, well, <laughs> to go back to the correspondence of the week, she picked Kona. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, as as for outlook, they they did. I, I don't care what anyone tells you uh, that it doesn't change your life. If you're doing it right, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having kids, hi. Having kids, children, either having them from birth or taking them on mm -hmm. when they're older, changes you. Mm hmm. Changes your outlook, changes uh, your priorities, mm -hmm. or it should. It right. should change. It should. For sure, I, I, yeah. I mean, if nothing else, it it's that shift from, you know, immaturity, young adulthood into responsibility. Yeah. Kind of a thing. And just taking care of yourself to taking care of others. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So then, um, what about your wife? Um, cause I know she was raised, um, in a, in a Christian, we'll just, we'll leave it at Christian. Um, is, do you guys have conversations about faith or spiritualism or? Nope. <laughs> I, I was never, I, I know I came out of it, but I was never really pushed into Christianity. Uh, I, my, I, I really went to church. I didn't go to church with my parents, except maybe on holidays. I went with my paternal grandparents. Oh, okay. And so church, faith, all that from its earliest time to me was this hour with me and my grandpa and grandma. Okay. Hala, stop that. I <laughs> just well, hand me that. It was it was just you know that just this time it was family it was just this and that that was where it formed mm -hmm. and then when I got old enough and started paying attention mm -hmm. where it started meaning yeah. something yeah yeah interesting all right so let's talk about some of your favorites okay what are your favorite books um. Yeah. Well, uh, my favorite book, to go back to Zen, I've, I think I've told both of you to read this book, is uh, Hardcore Zen, The Truth About... The Truth About... I know. Hardcore Zen, Punk Rock, Monster Movies, and The Truth About Everything by, <laughs> by Brad Warner. Okay. Who I bought completely on a whim because I found it and... His first name is my first name, and mm -hmm. my best friend, last name is Warner. And I'm like, oh my gosh. That one? The, the uh, synchronicity one. of it all. That one. <laughs> this was the re-release with like 20 new pages or something at the end that mm. just came out not terribly long ago. I, I read this book every three-ish years, two, yeah. three years. I'm, I'm coming due. Yeah. I know that. I'm coming due. I'm coming due. I know that much. Uh, I have a few of his other books, too, that I haven't read. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just something I can... I, I picked up this book and... Boom. It just grabbed you. Yeah, and I read it. Yeah. Um, any other favorite pagan books? Uh, pagan books I'm currently reading in <laughs> a little bit of preparation for this. Uh, what is it called? I know I forget it. I picked it up uh, used. I just kind of looked on. I picked it up a while ago. Well, Sacred Paths for Modern Men. A wake-up call from your 12 archetypes by Dagonet Dewar. Ooh. Yeah. And it's it's pretty good so far. Okay. It's a little, a little more organized because they have initiation rites. 
It's an old book. It came out in like 07, I mm-hmm. believe. But it's the it's these twelve archetypes of men, of the of the male. Okay. In a not specifically magic world, but it's leaning towards it. He he is Wiccan. Okay. He's a, a his particular sect. I gotta actually look it up. It sounds interesting. I'd never heard it before. Uh-huh. Calls it storyteller Wicca. Hmm. I've hmm. I haven't looked it up. I want to. It sounds. You know, be interesting. Yeah. So is he in more like mythology type archety- I, archetypes? Uh, they are uh, the divine child, lover, warrior, trickster, green man, guide, craftsman, magician, destroyer, king, healer, and sacrificed one. So mm-hmm. mythology and stories in general. Is what right. It the, like. the, it's a, yeah, the yeah. typical ar- archetypes that you, you look yeah. at when right. you look at god forms from the male. Yep. Interesting. That, mm, mm. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. <laughs> this is, as far as I can tell, this is the only book he's written. Uh-huh. Said it is an older book. Uh, he was in the cut in the forward. It you know gives a little bit of background. He was either a contributing editor or editor in chief or something of New Age magazine for a good oh. number of years. Oh, wow! Interesting. The, yeah, the 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 basis of it. Is that, and here, here's where it gets sketchy sitting around the two ladies, you know, <laughs> strong, independent <laughs> women, is that there is a physical, physiological sign when a girl becomes a woman. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not saying that just because you got your cycle, you... But in the olden days, you did. If you were, yeah. yes, they started you very much. Started if you have a child, for, you were a woman. Yep, yes. You were a woman. They started looking to marry, you off. marry, marry you off. off, improve your station, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That doesn't exist for men, right? No, there, there is no. I mean, it kind of does, kind of the same thing, but there's no outward manifestation. Bag, there, 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 yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's no gong sound of. Hey, this is it. This is it. This is when you become a man. Yeah, kind and of a so, thing. And so he he says that, or he uh, his premise is that we've lost something in that. We've lost the the recognition of what it is to start becoming a man. Because we and used to, to have so many more um, uh, rights and rights of passage. Mm-hmm. And you became mm-hmm. this old, you did this, and you became this old, mm-hmm. you did this. And, and then we became a society where um, fathers became absent. Right. And boys were growing up without fathers. Right. So those rites of passages that that became, you know, less widely observed as a rite of passage. Right. Well, and a lot of them, too, were happen. kind of whitewashed um, because of the... Okay, the Christians were on everything. But, yeah, it's just... It, our society moved away from those types of rights because yeah, we moved they away called from them, tribalism. They called them pagan or tribal mm-hmm. or, or barbaric or whatever. And mm-hmm. So we don't have those anymore. But Christianity, and particularly Catholicism, is one of the few religions that still does. Does. Mm-hmm. Al- altar boys, right. attendance. Right. That is still mm-hmm. in... in even if it's a basic form or a very specialized form just in this, that is still a rite of passage. That mm-hmm. is still a, you are no longer a child sitting in the pew. You are now carrying the, in participating, participating in and taking and, part. In. You have, right. you have a job, you have a duty. Yes. In this mm-hmm. larger world. And there are some denominations that have confirmation right. that encompasses both boys and girls. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can that can serve as a rite of passage, too. Right. And the Jewish faith has... The bar mitzvah yeah. and the bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah yeah. mm-hmm. 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 So, I guess maybe it's that we moved away from those very strict religions that we lost a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I might have to read that book myself. Hmm. Just, it's it's in it's pretty good. I was a little iffy at the very beginning. For I'm I'm not going to go into it here. That's not relevant. Mm-hmm. But the I'm I'm only I'm into the trickster. I just started. 
And that, that was the order that I, I read. The order I read them in is the order they're in the book. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the, the divine child isn't the child. That's the point of becoming a man. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't leave, that is the point of becoming more than more than the child. Mm -hmm. You're you're no longer so much under your your parents' purview and responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're old enough to make decisions and yes, and face the repercussions. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it the he gives a little uh, ritual. He gives two uh, two actually. Uh, first one is to kind of come into. I don't say contact, but embrace what the particular archetype that you're entering into. And the other one is to bring someone into it. Mm. And it's a very, it's set up as, as a, I don't say all male coven, but those are the only parts written. Because you would have the, the initiate and then, I'm trying to remember, uh, a youth warrior, a noble and an elder. Well, I think in, in that situation, just like coming in of age for a girl to a woman, why would you have something of the opposite, someone of the opposite sex in there? It's right. not, it's not a woman's ritual. It's a man's ritual. Right. right. So it would be male representation, not mm -hmm. female. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, in, and in the, in the first one in the divine child, it's at the end of it, the initiate is given gifts from each of the others mm -hmm, mm -hmm. either magical tools or something to help them mm -hmm. and so it's a little more than just words they're given something mm -hmm. um it, it's it all of the the three i've read so far the uh child warrior or child lover warrior they're all very i, I don't want to say they're, they're not toxic masculinity. They're not, I am man, hear me roar. Mm -hmm. Like the first, one, once they call the, um, call the quarters, initiate the god and the goddess, and who they realize, they, they do, they call the goddess first, they do the four quarters, mm -hmm. and then call on the goddess, who is, I, I paraphrase, equal to our own, mm -hmm. uh, can't have one without the other, then mm -hmm. they call the god. The first line out in the divine child is you are now a man. You will take care of yourself, women. You will respect them. Mm. They, they've all been written with not necessarily blatant, but it's there. You will respect life. You will respect others' opinions. Mm -hmm. You will respect women. You will, it, it's very anti Toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. I like it, that. It, it, it's not like I said. It's not a. I am man. Hear me roar. Mm -hmm. It's and that and that kind of spoke to me mm -hmm. a little bit. It's, it's I am man. I will protect you. I will. I will be the man. Mm -hmm. And while that vision of of the man taking care of everything is a little out of out of fashion, as it were nowadays, it's still important well the thing is because it teaches he teaches respect at the same time you don't you don't protect a woman because she needs protecting no you protect her because she's important that's right uh, uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, and i think it lends it kind of comes back to that being mindful mm -hmm. you know because um i know that there are there are in korea it is an important thing that if a, if a man and a woman are walking on a sidewalk, walking along the sidewalk, it's important culturally that and the man... It used to be here too. Mm -hmm, that the man be on the outside mm -hmm. and be closest to the road. Right. And we've lost that. Mm -hmm. And do you know why? Because nobody walks. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, do you know why the man walks on the outside? Or supposed to, to walk on the To be between the woman and between, danger. Yeah, between, yeah. Between the woman and danger. The... That's part of it. The the initial, the original, as it was given in, oh, uh, who's the Miss Molly's book, A Good Man oh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it, um, back, back, back in the forties and fifties, when they wrote this, the man stood on the outside to protect the woman from splash. 
mm-hmm. mud. Oh, from road sh- mm-hmm. ruts. Yep, yep. And they would put their their coat down yep. over the mud puddle. But but it, it, it's the same. Yes, mm-hmm. from from danger or something mm-hmm. jumping the curb. Uh, that's also uh, if you no matter which way you're facing walking, your left side is you're you're always still supposed to have your woman woman you have the women on your left shield arm. Oh, sword and shield. Mm-hmm. So you could you could protect them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why we drive on. Well, that, in England, that's why they drive on the left. They have their sword arm facing oncoming traffic. Oh, oh, we just had to flip it, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did because those horrible English. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. So we've talked about books. So what are some of your favorite podcasts, pagan wow. podcasts? We were talking about well, podcasts I always earlier. always listen to the Heart of the Witches podcast. Aww. Do I have my money now? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Uh, I listened quite a bit to a uh, pagan podcast. Um, I got through quite a bit of the myths and legends that mm. Kathy told me That's about. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Way back when, and then I switched phones. So I've downloaded it, but I've... Um, I'm listening to one now. I'm not sure on it. It's entertaining. I'm not going to... I'm not going to mention it. For reasons I'll tell you, ladies, after we get off the... <laughs> <laughs> Be- because it's a... It's not... Local to here, but it's local to the state. Mm-hmm. And there, there are uh, two or three degrees of friends mm. in in our wider circle, and it's yeah. I'm I'm just not. It's entertaining. Okay, I haven't I've gotten a couple of food for thoughts from it, but more and more, I just started. But more and more recently, I've found myself just kind of. It's been background noise. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. kind of goes in one ear and out the yeah. other. And right. Anything that might be interesting, you two have already covered. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Like the the sabbats, or it's okay. So I'm getting a lot of a lot of secondary information. So I don't I don't even know how much longer I'm going to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you hit YouTube for any? Just this. Okay. I did listen to Thunder Wizard. Mm, okay, that was good. Uh, I, I had trouble with him because the audio levels are terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, but I'm going to try it again. Because he, he has very good information. Yes. Mm-hmm. on it, Especially on the... Uh, the backgrounds, the, the origins mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. And I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked out his YouTube channel in a while because I think he took like a break from posting things, but I think he's back posting again. Is he? Yeah. Hmm. So. I have to look at that again. Yeah. Anything else you can think of, Kathy? Do you think that there is anything that you do, you do because you're a guy? Or is it just you? I mean, we know what it's like to be women and pagan. But, um, I don't know. It's just a question. You can say, no, well, I don't know um, what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's exactly what you're talking about. But I, I, I kind of referenced you know, the, the craft earlier when it was uh, chic to be a witch. And now it's... It's in there. It's, it's actually leave going out already uh, to be a Viking. Thank you, Outlander. Now it's Scotsman <laughs> again. Again, again. I never left that, but anyways. <laughs> kills are still cool. Right. They are. Um, Amen. And so I, I've actually just in a little, the little bit of people that I've interacted with, or not interacted, but had conversation with. Once upon a time, when, when we started, everyone was in the broom closet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then nobody was because it was the craft and everyone was... 
It was crafted, goth, and I'm, all everything all I'm at once. I'm a witch and proud. <laughs> yes, and everything all at once. And then it kind of went away. And now witchcraft has become... Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind, kind of a, a tagline with feminism, with being... And so it was never it was never in to be when everyone was hiding it wasn't really in to be a guy pagan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when everyone was out because the craft it wasn't cool to be a guy pagan mm -hmm. and now that it was cool for a minute because of vikings everybody was viking and everybody was mm -hmm. heathen and everyone was making the sign of the hammer and mm -hmm. everyone and everyone and it for that that brief moment where it was okay it became a joke and so the few people I've had any sort of conversation with are, it, it uh, degraded quickly into, oh, you must like Vikings. Or Marvel right. Comics. Mm -hmm. it, which, uh, brilliant, beautifully done. Right. I grew up on Marvel Comics. Right. No, nobody's got a problem with nobody's Marvel. Nobody's got a problem with that. And I think, I think that's because there isn't, a large male presence in paganism in this area. I think that a lot of the males who are drawn to paganism, not to draw too broad strokes on it, do it because of the inclusivity for homosexuals. That's not to say that all witches that or pagans who are male are gay. That's not true, absolutely. But it's it's um, because it's so inclusive of homosexuals right. that gay men are drawn to a religion that's going to be accepting right. of them. Mm -hmm. So it's harder for a straight guy to, I don't want to say harder, it's really not harder. It's, it's different for a straight guy to be drawn to something like paganism because mm -hmm. they're not going away from a religion that is very much anti mm -hmm. their beliefs or however you want to put that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because I, I'm friends with, I'm friends with, um, with male pagans, but I think a lot of them are homosexual to some extent, mm -hmm. you know, part of that LGBTQ. Right. Um, plus I always forget the plus. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm trying to think besides Brad and some of the some guys that come to meet up. There's the guy at work. I work with a pagan. I was so surprised. You what? I work with a pagan. Yeah. A pagan. male pagan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. and there was there was the one guy that came to um the Circle Hands mm -hmm. pagan meetup. Right. Yeah. Meetup. I yeah. mean, there there's not a lot. There's just not a lot of straight males out there. I mean, and that there. sucks. And that sucks if you're a chick looking for a dude. Because <laughs> it's like... No, they're, they're, I think they're out there. I think they're still... Closeted? Yeah. They're still in hiding. Or they're in a relationship with a female pagan. Mm -hmm. I see. Already. I do see that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not in our immediate circle. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. Because it's not... It, and it goes back to you either get get judged for uh, for being a poser because you mm -hmm. like Vikings or a racist. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Nazis. Yeah. Or you get automatically assumed to be alternative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it, the, the, the male pagan has never the male pagan as a religious figure or practitioner, or whatever you want to be, has never been mainstreamed. No. Mm -mm. So it's always been there, but it's never been. Yeah, I mean, you, you have a lot of the um, Alexander Saunders, you got Gerald Gardner, you got, mm -hmm. um, who's the guy, Crowley. I say mm -hmm. everyone goes but, back to Crowley on the last Mm -hmm. That's very different than your everyday male pagan. Mm -hmm. Right. Very 
very different. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, it's you don't you don't see that many stray male pagans that are just running around. I mean, even when we go to convocation, it is the majority, you know, more than half of the people there are female. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And at least half of the other half are gay. Right. And that's not a bad thing. No, it's not. It's absolutely It's not a good not. thing. It's just it, it, it's, it's what it is. is. Right. And and it's interesting why is that? Because the while, you know, when we look at the history and we look at the elders, there are definitely some strong women that that were involved in that in the new age movement, you know, Doreen Valiente, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But it was spearheaded so much by guys. By I believe they well, were straight guys. I Saunders, mean, Gardner, yeah, look at Cochran. The, look at the era that it was in, though. I mean, it was prior to the rampant feminism mm -hmm. that has come out. And so everything got attributed to men. So what happened? Even What happened from the time that the movement started to now? Hmm, that's a good question. What happened to that? It's a good question. But and is it is it a... Is it a geographic thing? I mean, is it just something that we're not seeing because we're in Michigan, rural yeah, Michigan? I, I think it. I think I don't think this problem problem exists in England, right, or Ireland, or right. I don't. I don't think it's. I, I don't know, but because that's where a lot of the names you've been listing off. Right. Yeah, they from, started yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cochrane was in. America, because the Tubal Cain was American, um, and I think there was another organization that was similar to or at the same time as Tubal Cain, but I can't think of who it is. I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Um, Could it be because straight males are not driven to alternate religions the way that women and homosexual men are? Or, not to be super painty, Bart Broadstroke, is it because straight men aren't as spiritual as... I, I, I have no answers. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm still, you know, hacking my way through, through my own path of... Right. I mean, I hate to blame everything on Christianity, but, I mean, if, if you look at it, men have it made in Christianity... Mm -hmm. They do, so they're not driven. But to they find can't something be. Different. They can't be the only ones. That's true, because well, I mean, Christianity is a is a shrinking population of our country, right? So there's a lot of people who are not in Christianity. What are they doing? And mm -hmm. are they are they the ones that are coming to paganism? Because the pagan population is really growing. Well, you know what? It's we might be having this conversation, but we're not the only one having listening this to, this, to this conversation. <laughs> So let's open it up yeah. um, because I'm trying to remember there is, um, <laughs> let's go back to, um, let's go back to our analytics and stuff. There is, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I do have, um, oh, I can't look at it on here. Um, when I go in to look at my subscribers and stuff like that, if you've registered your sex, there is a pie chart that tells me what the viewership is. And what was the last time you looked at it? It's roughly a quarter. Quarter are men? Quarter of, yep, a quarter mm -hmm. of the viewers are men. Now, most of the folks that I interact with are female. The people that are, um, the people that are commenting, commenting, they're mostly female, but I do have men. Mm-hmm. So if you're a straight guy and you're listening to this and you have something to say about, you know, what we're talking about, then comment. Yeah, this is a really fascinating topic and I'd like to get into this a little bit more. How much is it to play devil's advocate, not accusing, devil's advocate, how much of it is that Witchcraft Wicca particularly with the triple goddess mm -hmm. has become, the practitioners have become unintentionally, again, I'm not accusing them playing devil's advocate, but how much of it is the Wicca practitioners, female practitioners have become 
exclusive to the guys. Well, and you find that in Dianics and some yeah. other some right. other groups, Especially right? Dianics, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, but I, I mean, but like I said, un unintentionally, I don't. I'm not accusing or saying any of this because that's well. That, but I, that, that, that's but, a trait of some of the, of the religions that we've left. But right? I see your point because a lot of a lot of groups or people have been so damaged by Christianity they have they have our time accepting or acknowledging a male god mm -hmm. so does that drive men away from wicca paganism mm -hmm. witchcraft and, and and like the actual practitioners themselves you know yes we have a coven that just happens to be oh, all man. female members but that's not by design right mm -hmm. That's by circumstance, you know, and we've had men in circle. Mm -hmm. We love to have the male energy, you know, present like that and things like that. We're not against it. It's just that, you know, there hasn't been a guy that has presented themselves that has, has wanted, mm -hmm. sought, you know, right. membership or whatever. So, um, so yeah, that's in, okay. So I feel like we're, let, let's, let's Rebbit stop all. there. Yeah. <laughs> let's stop there and let's, you know, let's invite folks to give us their opinions on this. So feel free to comment. If you don't feel comfortable commenting, Helen has an email address, which is heart of the witches path at yahoo.com. So, um, Email us and you you can not share your name or ask us not to share your name. I would be more than happy to talk about this again. Definitely. To, to share some insights that our listeners might have to say. And maybe if somebody wanted to get on the podcast and talk about it with us, mm -hmm. why, why not? Right. Let's For have sure. a better conversation or For sure. more of a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not local, I want to speak for the ladies, but have them read your email. If you, right. if you have a thought you wouldn't mind for public consumption, mm -hmm. right? Public being <laughs> for, right. for, for general consumption, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be very interesting. Yeah, I think that's a really good stopping point for Considering us. Considering we're almost an hour, yeah. Yeah, I say so. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have a lot to talk about. Thank, so thank you very us, much, Brad. Yes, for us talking, talking. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we wouldn't have a problem. Um, so if you enjoyed this podcast um, or learned something from it, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to go through this audio and I will pick out um, podcasts and books and stuff like that that we've talked about. And I'll put a link in the description box if you're interested in purchasing or learning more about whatever. Um and uh, we'll make that available. Um, if you haven't done so already, um, hit the subscribe button. Um, we like to have you come back to the channel and check out what's going on here. Lots of links in the description box too. Instagram accounts, Facebook page, things like that. Make sure to check those out. I think that's going to be it for this podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Um, don't forget, did you mention the Instagram? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Um, did you mention Instagram? Did you mention that we could use some new topics? So please give us new topics if you want us to talk about stuff. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm done. Okay. And if you've enjoyed hearing a little bit of bass in the, uh, the podcast. <laughs> if you want Brad to come back. Yeah. Know. Yeah, for sure. I would totally be down for that. So um, that's going to be it for this podcast. Thanks for taking the time to walk the path for a little while with us. And until next time, blessed, blessed be. be.